I don't really think you're gonna be putting this on, but I actually do this every day. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Adolescence, high school, puberty, this developmental stage is so, can be feel so tricky. It, it's certainly the emotional development that happens in those years of say 13 to 18 is incredible. They're really trying to find themselves. We are fortunate that this school, or in the 60s, said counseling is important, let's get these support groups going. So for this random little high school to start counseling groups for teenagers was, was like unheard of. I think probably people thought this place was crazy. You know, what are they doing? I can come in here and be like, this is what's going on. Help me. I went through a lot of problems like freshman year, sophomore year with my family and it's just really comforting to be able to talk to them and to be able to come in here and say whatever you want. And it's just a safe place to kick back and really just vent. Parents often want to know if, they, if their kid's like drinking or using drugs, or are they, are they dating so and so, are they sleeping around, are they pregnant? And there's all these areas that we have to explain to the kids, those are protected, it's all confidential information. So the kids tend to, they tend to share, you know, once they really are are trusting of of the environment. This room is like a no like fake zone. Like you could just say whatever you want whenever you want. And I feel like he's one of those like people that like would do anything for you, like if you really needed his help. I think Doc has like seriously been like like a second father figure to a lot of us. We really are so close and it's crazy to think that it's all because of him. Like even just because the way he sits here and like the way he carries himself. Today we're going to be covering relationships. You know, we had a chance to write down any of our questions that we could have about sexuality and relationships. It could be an awkward topic at any age. I mean, not just for teenagers. The reason why it's funny in movies to anyone at any age is that sex and relationships can be funny, messy, sloppy, etc. So this is a great chance for you all, with all the questions you wrote anonymously, for us to be able to cover this topic. So, nice. Good relationship question. How do you tell a friend that would like to date you that you're not interested? Our friendship is something that's really special and I wouldn't want it to, to end because I'd say like, let's face reality, like sounds we'll probably be with each other forever. Oh, so he starts very like soft and gentle <laughs> and then you drop the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want to lose you as a friend and risk losing you as a friend and a girlfriend or a boyfriend yeah, also. Sure. All right, good. I mean, your parents aren't always gonna like people that you hang out with. They like people like because sure. they grew up in a different time. Like my parents, like they don't always like my friends. Yeah. Um, they always think that they know who I should hang out with. But I would talk to her about it or my dad about it. And if they don't like the person, maybe I would try to tell them things I do like about them. It's good. Or maybe I would positive quality. Maybe they do have a reason for not liking them. Maybe I would try to like realize that maybe. Verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, big time drug dealer. No, no go. You should accept those as good reasons not to be in a relationship. What if it's like the ethnic group, a very close age range, but he's older, or religious? You want to tackle it first, Leon? You, yeah. you look ready to go. <laughs> Girls, in a sense, are looked at as being like more vulnerable in a relationship. Like you feel like guys have like the upper hand in a relationship. A lot of times, it's not true, but I feel like that's what parents think, and they have to protect sure. their. Girl, like their little girl so I guess they want them to be ready to handle like emotions but in reality I feel like in some situations girls are more ready to have relationships yeah and unfortunately right I mean the truth is in terms of sexual assaults and rapes right I mean the vast majority are towards women right I mean the amount of men that are raped and sexually assaulted in America is it's really tiny right so you have that concern from parents of a daughter and the second thing is although a guy can get sexually abused or raped a guy can never get pregnant Right, so we have the, we have that double whammy for <coughs> girls, right? Who's in a relationship? Liana? Anyone else? Somewhat. Somewhat. Ish. Who else is in a somewhat relationship? Yeah. Is any sophomore talking? What do you guys use as a phrase? Who's talking to someone? A few of you. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. a few of you. It was at all five. Four. All five, no. I have colleagues that have a lot of their credentials, like, you know, clearly displayed. Mine, I laugh, this is my diploma from Boston College. You kind of miss it because there's so much in the room, A. B, it's all in Latin. 
So I joke that a kid could think it's a pirate map. <laughs> Even my licensure is tucked over here behind Harry Carey, Napoleon Dynamite, Stewie from Family Guy, and the Rhino from Spider-Man. Having all these different toys, tchotchkes, posters, pins, the kids love it. They feel like it's an extension of, you know, their living room or their bedroom, and they just feel kind of like at home. I think it might have been a freshman or sophomore, hadn't been in here, and he, he was just like taking it all in, and he was like, he said, there's no other room in the school like this. We make a real point to leave the book bags. It's almost like a literal and figurative thing when they come to group. It's like, leave your bags over here. You know, we never let them have them on their lap, like a Linus blanket or something like that. It's, the, it's truly the idea of the whole person. You know, that if you help the student to feel safe, nurtured, comfortable, that they can be themselves during this, such an awkward time adolescence. I just think you have, even though you're only 17, I've already seen you have this knack with kids. And, and even beyond having the knack, you just like, you care about them anyway. He sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. And I think that's something that he should be proud of in himself. And I think he doesn't even know that. Like I'm a shy person and I feel like this, like he trusted me to be a peer group leader. And I think that he's pushed me out of my comfort zone and without him, I wouldn't be what I am. It's not to say that she wasn't this person before, but to see her like show people this like amazing person that she really is. Oh, bring it in. <laughs> Once I became a peer group leader is when I really started considering like going into social work and like that as a field. And I think just getting to know him, if I didn't know him, I might have never thought of that as like a career path, seriously. Social work is now getting more mainstream where more people understand it. Psychology has such a focus on getting the research and the data, and um, which is all important. And psychiatry, of course, is a medical model. So social work pulls from both, but also pulls from economics, political science, um, social welfare, all these different disciplines. A few of the schools I applied to for social work grad school, you couldn't apply to them if you hadn't taken a year of human biology in college. But that idea of even learning about your human body, you could be working with a client who's dealing with diabetes, or in a high school, I have students who, you know, their parents dealing with cancer, and, and where is it at? Is it in remission? Are they still going for chemo? How do I handle my mom or dad just lost their hair? It's crucial to, to, to do the research, and I think that right now, Luckily, in the field of social work, there, there are so many opportunities to do research in all these different areas. The discipline in general is getting more research driven and academic, and so we get to put ourselves up there with conferences and publications and things like the Encyclopedia of Social Work and you know, research articles. So that idea of community and, and looking outside of just one aspect, like not just the mind. You know, let's look at all these different bubbles and fields around uh, the person. There's so many things that are exactly the same today for these kids, and we often talk about this. P parental strife with an adolescent going through all their hormonal changes in puberty. The awkwardness of a first date, a first kiss. Do you, does someone like you? What do you do with a crush? The question about experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Sexual experimentation. You know, what is your identity? What, do you have faith? What is that faith? But the social media platforms change so fast. It's a brand new additional thing we are synthesizing. We don't go trolling for data. We don't mine the social media. Uh, realm, but anything handed to us um, in guidance, we take a look at it, and because it's public, that's easy for us, because it's not confidential. We are fortunate that this school said, counseling is important, let's get these support groups going. And that's the thing called SMILE, something more in life's experience. If I were Mr. Auer or Brother Shady, the assistant principal or the principal for a day, that is Andrew, nice. People sound like people want, maybe we'll do that one. Open relationships from Christina Fenton. Our relationships, whether friendly or romantic, too heavily based on social media from Caroline Pickles. Pickles. Our grades a good measure of you and your ability from Jack, Joe Orocho Kelly. And double standards, expectations of girls and boys and what you're supposed to be like. Yeah. Are there double standards for that? Anyone on, uh, on this topic of open relationships, a very unique sort of thing. We haven't, we haven't, I don't think we've ever covered this in Smile Weekly. Anybody else? 
Okay, start us off, Alex. Um, well, I think, like, with anything else, it only matters if the two people are happy. Like, personally, I know I'm a huge pushover when it comes to people I have a crush on, so if I ever did get into a relationship and the guy said to me I want an open relationship, like, even if I didn't want one, I would probably be like, okay, sure, and then, like, just be standing in the corner like, why are you doing this to me? Why would, why would you say that? Why would you say, okay, sure? Because, like, I wouldn't want him to leave me. This is a topic for another time, my friend. <laughs> like? <laughs> well, I mean... I want to address it at least yeah. briefly, but I mean, you see the reactions Christina just said had a reaction. I mean, you should never have to feel that way. Well, let me see if I'm mistaken. I know Christina seems to be siding with what I said. So Alex was saying she would stay with a guy who wanted an open relationship just so she could be in a relationship with that guy. Meanwhile, she wouldn't want it and she wouldn't be involved with anybody else. How many of you, how many of you think that's a bad idea? Let me just see how many hands we have. Now what I need you to do, Alex, is oh, yeah. look around. And Alex, are you familiar with the word unanimous? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I know. You see where I'm going with this, Alex? Yeah, I see where you're going with so, it. So the bigger thing for future is to obviously help get you to a spot where you never feel like that. Because first of all, you would deserve much better. You would deserve a guy who's in, or whoever. You deserve a partner who is intuitive enough to know that you're not happy with that. It's incredibly friendly, for sure. Um, and I, I guess mentor, mentee, counselor, counselee is probably one of the better phrases, but I guess I have such good examples of, of former students of mine that then graduated, obviously became alumni, that are now dear friends of mine. You know, and my, I, my wife and I got married a year and a half ago, and there were five alumni that had been some of my first sophomores here. They were my first sophomores, so they were 15 when I was 24, and today, um, we're friends. He just is overly nice. Like, I don't know how somebody can't get mad. Like, he's always smiling, and like, you could feel how genuine he is as a person, like, trying to help us. I've never seen a person manage this amount of, like, kids and problems and just, like, conversations in general. Like, he remembers everyone and almost everything. He really does um, pull together a giant community in the school that otherwise, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be who they are today. But I've been blessed to live a really rich life. And, and touch a lot of lives, travel the world, sometimes show these kids parts of the world they've never seen. And um, if God forbid something happened, I could say, you know, I've lived a really great life. So. Mm -hmm.